It's the 2K Sports Pregame Show. Hey, Ernie Johnson here, and I'm joined by Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. And the pregame warm-ups are wrapping up out in Houston, where it'll be the Rockets going up against the Detroit Pistons. And guys, for the Pistons... In ninth place in the Eastern Conference, a playoff berth is not far away from them, but they won't be able to back into it. They'll have to grab it. And here we are late in the season. Shaq, for the teams at the very bottom of the standings, there can be a tendency to give up on yourself and a desire to dial things back, I guess. Pack it in. This happens, doesn't it? Yeah, it happens, but no great coach would stand for that. No, we're great players. You just got to, you know. Dig yourself out the hole, Ernie. You got to keep fighting. You know what well, they should do? What's that? Go watch Hoosiers. Ooh. The Gene Hackman speech should get them going. Okay, you think that would work on an NBA player? I think it would. Pick a fence, baby. Pick a fence. Sometimes you just can't give that all-out intensity because you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You can only see the light right in front of your face. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you got to give those bench guys some more minutes at this time. Let's send it down to Kevin Harlan. Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the NBA. Welcome everyone to Noche Enabia. A Latin theme is the backdrop to tonight's festivities. Kevin Harlan here along with analysts Greg Anthony and Steve Smith, and we'll be hearing from DA along the sideline all game long. The Houston Rockets coming to this one after a win against the Trailblazers in Portland. And kind of a close game, only a four-point win, but a win nonetheless. And anytime you come off the bench, you know your role. And that night, it was about scoring. Especially on the road. You're hoping for any extra contributions. But for a couple of stretches there, the backups control the game. And nothing tips off a broadcast like getting the lowdown from the sidelines. And we've got David Aldridge there for that. David, good evening. Well, guys, Stan Van Gundy has coached the likes of Alonzo Mourning, Shaquille O'Neal, and Dwight Howard. But he said, as a rebounder, Andre Drummond is as good as anybody, if not the best that I've ever been around. He just goes out and gets the ball. Drummond said, it's just a will. The will to get the ball most people won't jump for. I just put myself out there. Kevin? Thanks, DA. And Drummond is just a hulk of a man. He's really the backbone of this team. Well, Smitty, we have a fantastic matchup between two of the top centers in the league right in front of us here. It's a throwback to an era of an earlier time when big men were dominant in this league. Kevin, I remember those days when you, you just sat down, you wanted to see Shaq versus Ewing, Hakeem versus David Robinson. Those were fun. Yes, as a guard, we had matchups. But you know, that was different. Those were the big man battling. Yes, yes. I miss those days. I do too. So Detroit will get the first possession. We've got a chance here to set the floor, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go for this one. And Detroit, looking at who they've got. We've got Ennis. Andre Drummond is out there with Griffin. Then there's Reggie Bullock, and it's Smith in at the one. Detroit on D. They come into this having outplayed Phoenix the last game. They executed on the road, stayed focused, stayed consistent with who you are as a team. Well, sometimes the away games brings guys together. It's you versus the world in that situation. Rebounded by Capella. 
And it's the Rockets on the break. Paul's running. It's good. And love how Paul seeks out his teammates. Superb at slicing the D to pieces with his passing. Smith with it. He's coming off a 13-point game against Phoenix. And it's Drummond missing. Still scoreless after four attempts, struggling to find any daylight. That's tipped. A little over a minute gone here in the first quarter. Bullock kicks to Griffin. Ball's knocked loose. Oh, and a fast break for the Rockets. A nice shot by Tucker. Here's Smith. Passes to Ennis. He kicks to Griffin. Lobbed up there for Drummond. He had stolen by Capella. And it's Houston on the break. Oh, terrific pick. Then kicks it right ahead, turning defense into offense. And on the other side, that's an annoying miscue. Total lack of focus. Smith kicks to Ennis. The first quarter of action, two minutes in. Outside Griffin. A three-pointer is right on target. And boy, did they need that one. Their first make in the five field goal attempts they've had. From the baseline. Rebound by the Pistons. He likes to work that in-between area, upset with himself that he couldn't connect. Smith dishes to Griffin. Off target from outside. Rockets have gotten four of six field goal attempts to drop in the first quarter. Offensive rebound, Capella uses the glass to finish the layup. And the story here, Kevin, early on is how well they've shot the basketball. Smith outside. It's tipped. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Pistons will retain possession. All right, a chance to check out stats for Harden. He's been on a tremendous roll since the All-Star break. He's around 30 points per clip, seven assists, and just over two steals. And he's been putting up points with regularity. I mean, that's what they depend on, his killer instinct on offense. Well, and we've seen defenses try to adjust. But he has the intelligence along with the talent, just finds new ways to beat him. And this quarter, he has clearly been off the mark. The ball movement on this run has been fantastic and is a big part of why they've been able to get these good looks. And here's Smith. Griffin passes to Drummond. And the rebound paying off as they pick up two on the second chance bucket right there. No, they didn't put enough body on Drummond. He has too much talent for that. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Andre Drummond picks one up. And the story with P.J. Tucker is an interesting one. Was drafted back in 2006. Played a year in the NBA. Then hopped between a ton of different leagues in Europe before coming back to the NBA, Steve, in 2012. Well, his journey has been definitely a long one, but Tucker learned a lot about what it takes to find Take success break. going Take overseas. Break. He's been Two a shots. player who does all the little things for a team since his return. That free throw, no good. And he sinks the second. And when you watch this Rockets team, you can see just how explosive they are on the offensive end. Almost everyone on the floor can hurt you from deep. And they all know their role and execute it to a tee. Good eyes by Drummond. He's working on this. Spots the open man. Delivers the dime. And it's sent back by Drummond. Smith kicks to Griffin. Nice ball movement by Detroit. Bullock, good. And last season, the Rockets' offense was incredible. Then they go and add Chris Paul. They can run a team off the floor if they get hot. Two great playmakers in Paul and Harden. And making a move for Paul made a lot of teams fear what the Rockets can do now on offense. Houston shooting their third free throw shot of the game. One 
one shot. And when you look at what the Pistons have done, pretty clear that this is a team that has a vision of who they want to be. Strong defensively, really good at rebounding the basketball, and I think deliberate and patient on the offensive side of the floor. And it's Houston on the break. Here's Capella. Oh. <laughs> He's going to put that one in his scrapbook. Insane dunk. And now they're starting to rub it in. Build up a lead, and here we go. Baby, it is showtime. That was a great angle we just saw, courtesy of Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment. Yep, it counts. Working every day to develop his skills, drumming with a nice finish inside. Capella goes in, and the dunk by Capella. Oh, taking it to the rack with power. Hammering down the two-hand slam. Pistons trail by eight. Oh, Griffin in position. Rebounded by Tucker. And they could have used that trying to cut into this league. He's been off all night. That pushes it to double digits. And that's 13 points for Clint Capella. And you can't help but pick their defense apart. They're completely in disarray. And now the first time out called here for Detroit. Their last encounter was in Detroit. I, I just thought the defense was, was porous. Got any shot they wanted, really, for most of the evening. I'll give them credit. Even though they were facing very little resistance, they refused to play down to the level of their competition. And how about the career progression of Trevor Ariza? Uh, you know, he came into this league somewhat as, as an energy player who, you know, obviously could attack the rim. Now he's one of those guys who's primarily a 3 and D component. All-star break look now and how the breakdown between three-pointers and other shots have been for the Rockets. And clearly they haven't been shy about launching it from long range. That's the way the league has been going and they are certainly embracing that trend. Smith against Paul. Riven sets the screen for Smith. And Capella over to help. And Clint Capella is going to pick up a foul. That is his first foul of the game. Now Smith looking for his first basket still in this one. And Drummond kicks to Ennis. Just five on the clock. Takes the three. And really yet to put together any kind of rhythm from long range. And now the adventure begins. Drummond, one of the worst free throw shooters on the planet. Do you see the frame on Andre Drummond? Easy for me to see why he can shed off so many defenders inside. He's incredibly strong. Hard to stop when he gets near the rim. He misses the free throw. And the strength of Andre Drummond, you talked about it, Steve. It's not just upper body, but lower body as well. He can open up a lot of space if he gets the ball down low. You know, once he gets it in the paint, there's nothing you can do. His footwork off the block is coming along well. It's a process for him to refine his moves. So he comes up empty, missing both. He entered the league with high expectation. Drummond made a lot of mistakes early, as one would expect. Now starting to come into his own. Pistons trail by 10. Here's Bullock. Rebounded by Capella. 
Capella's got three rebounds now in this one. Ariza with the bucket. That's their third straight make off an assist. The Pistons shooting 31% here early on. Not getting the shots they'd like. Ennis misses. And here are the Rockets now. Stringing it together. They've got an 11-2 run going. Tucker can't get it to go. That's just two tough competitors meeting right at the rim. Someone, in my opinion, had to lose. Griffin, no one around him. Again, the miss by the Pistons. Obviously, this has been a tough quarter for him, but he's still trying to keep a positive mindset. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. Ennis dishes to Smith. And there's the foul. It'll go on P.J. Tucker. That is his first foul of the game. And Bahamute is checked in for P.J. Tucker. Stanley Johnson, he's checked in for the Pistons. Jacks up a three. And it's Bullock missing. Houston leading by 12. Here is Mbamute. Lays it in without an inch of room around him. Just impressed with the teamwork out there. Setting the table for one another. Each trip down becoming more important. And you need to string some successful offensive possessions together and play tough D. And it's out of bounds. The Pistons able to retain possession here. Eric Gordon, he's checked in for the Rockets. And then for Detroit, Anthony Tolliver. He's checked in for Andre Drummond. Langston Galloway comes in for Reggie Bullock. And Jameer Nelson is subbed in for Ish Smith. Now here's Johnson. He's averaging just around eight and a half points a game. Shot clock at six. And there's a whistle that goes on Luke Mbaamute. That's his first foul. Houston making some changes. Ryan Anderson, he's checked in for Clint Capella. And it's Green in for James Harden. And a switcher also for Detroit. Moreland's checked in. Nelson kicks to Galloway. And again, it's the Pistons missing. Here is Mbaamute. That shot is off. Now the Pistons take it the other way. Johnson kicks to Nelson. The dish now to Galloway. Pistons passing it around. There's the pick to the middle, up off the screen. Tolliver with the bucket. Yeah, another nice bucket down low. They've really been able to work the ball into the post effectively here so far. Fantastic ball movement. They're picking them apart with their passing. Now a timeout called by Detroit. Well, Ryan Anderson, a terrific deep threat in stretch four. And I remember last season when he told reporters that a heckler yelled out at him, hey, Ryan, you look like a math teacher. And, and you know, we've heard a lot of these off-the-wall heckles before. But the irony is it's oftentimes the strange ones that tend to stick with you more. And that's an example of it right there. And, look, you never want to see a team gut you this way. Really a good timeout. Some of this is just a matter of toughness, a willingness to play physical inside, something we're not seeing. And now let's have a look at the NBA's top snipers, shooting guards with the highest percentage from three-point territory over the last month. Fifth, Eric Gordon. You, know, you don't have to be a great shooter to play two guard, but, but it does help. And pretty much all of these guys fit into that great category. And so consistent from the three-point range, too. That's what I love about them. Their long-range shooting is always going to be there. You know what they're going to give you from behind the arc. Just four to shoot. And they'll turn it over. Could not get off a shot. 24-second violation. All right, a chance to see stats for Paul. 
In the second half of this season, he's been nothing short of spectacular. Sixth in free throw percentage. And his playmaking ability, unquestioned. One of the top 15 assist men in our league. And yet, he's a true professional at the free throw line. It's a part of the game where he excels. You want him at the line for you in crunch time. Pistons trail by 16. Nelson outside. They double him with green. Fires the three. Nelson, no luck. All the time in the world to get that one off. Green kicks to Gordon. To the inside, Mba Amute. The lead pass was put in just the right spot. And the Rockets lead by 18. And there's the pass to Johnson. They get a hand on it. Mba Amute with the steal. Paul goes in. Rebounded by Jameer Nelson. Well, you, you have to like their work on the boards, Kevin, particularly here to start the game. The shot's good. Yeah, and there it is again. On a lot of their possessions this first half, they've established great inside position. Shot's good from Mba Amute. Mba Amute has got six. Just no resistance on the inside. That's their fifth consecutive make in the paint. Pistons trail by 18. Here's Galloway. Quiet so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. Johnson in the corner. It's rebounded by Houston. Oh, and a fast break for the Rockets. Green leading the charge. It's deflected, but they recover it. He feeds it to Paul. The second chance effort. Good, and it's Green picking up the assist. The defense not putting up any fight on the inside. They've allowed 10 straight points in the paint. Nelson outside. There's a screen. Here's Galloway. Takes a big high bounce and goes in. Crafty move. He recognizes the size disadvantage, and the mid-range is close enough. Right. No reason to take it all the way to the rack. Instead, take what the defense allows. Uh, I don't know if you can do it any better on both ends than they have tonight. It's early, but they have taken full control of this game, and the fans here, they know it. Johnson, good. Rockets leading by 17. Here's Paul. Lays it up and in on the nice reverse. Paul's got his second bucket of the night. I'm sorry, that's poor defense down low again. It's been a mismatch thus far in the paint. Nelson against Paul. Tipped away. And out of bounds as the Rockets gain possession. As we approach the playoffs, let's see how the East is shaping up. Look at Toronto. Very strong season they've had, always at or, or near the top of the conference. And right now they're in first place in contention for that, exactly where they want to be as they close in on the postseason. And checking out Detroit, not really any threat right now as their record's showing a lot more losses. And checking out Detroit, they've just lacked that one extra piece that could put them over the top this season. They haven't been able to kind of set themselves apart. What they've done, they've kept themselves in the playoff picture, though. They haven't been spectacular, but they're still in the race. And we all know anything can happen in the postseason. That's all confidence right there. He knows he's in a groove, and they've got this team on its heels. There's a four-second difference from the shot clock to the game clock. Dishes to Galloway. They set the pick. From deep. Nelson, no luck. And pushing it up is Houston Rockets again in transition. Green, no luck. With one on the clock. That one, no good. And so it's the Houston Rockets riding high with a 23-point lead heading into the break. And it's been their rugged defense setting the tone. We've got more in store for you right after this.
And earlier, Chris Paul told us about the depth of their roster. So important for any team. Our bench is amazing. It's so exciting because when our bench comes in, uh, more often than not, if we're losing, they're going to get us the lead. And if we have the lead, they're going to increase the lead. And it's, it's fun to watch because everybody cheers for each other, too. When your starters feel that good about their second unit, guys, that's a heck of a asset that a team can have. And if you've seen Chris Paul cheering from the bench, you know that it's very, very true. And Kevin, that's the kind of team that, that's always been so much fun to play on. Everybody's really pulling for one another, no matter who's playing. E even in practice, uh, with that kind of a team, you, you tend to have more fun. Welcome back to Noche Latina, celebrating the Latin culture and their love for the game of basketball. It just keeps growing. And guys, we've seen the Rockets really take control here. I mean, through one, you have to like the effort, especially on that defensive end. There are several ways, as you know, to take control of a game. Getting stops is one of them. Here are the five Detroit has to start the second quarter. We've got Dwight Bikes, Anthony Tolliver out there with Johnson, and it's Moreland in at the center position. And last season, the final season for the Pistons, Smitty, playing at the Palace of Auburn Hills, as much as you love the new arena, it's always sad to say goodbye to an old friend. What was it like playing at the Palace of Auburn Hills, uh, Steve, when you were in the game? You know, I loved it because I'm from Detroit, the hometown, and those guys had that place rocking. It was state-of-the-art when they first built it. But if you look right now, is because I'm a Detroit native, they're playing inside of Detroit. The pass is a pass, but it was a great pass. Pass to Galloway. And Paul over to help. Paul with the steal. And it's Houston on the break. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. This is where Chris Paul dominates, using the dribble drive to create offense and get himself to the line. Well, Steve, when you think about leaders and players who I mean as much for the mental game of their team as their coach, you know, Chris Paul, right at the top of that list, he has always been a vocal floor general his whole career. You're totally right. Paul is very aware of everything that is going on in a game. Can get in a teammate's face if they Take have a, a mental lapse. A Not always an Two easy shots. pill to swallow, but all players respect Chris Paul's leadership. And that one falls for Paul. Chris Paul is a fun player to watch. The reason why, I love that he can shoot it, but he's one of the best passers in the history of the game. P.J. Tucker, he's checked in for Houston. Reza comes in for Gerald Green. And so Paul nails both of them. Now the NBA can be a superstitious place at times, Steve, with all the quirks and characters in the league. And when you played, what was the strangest uh, game day ritual that you ever saw? Uh, I think Harold Miner. He touched everything with his nose, his gym shoes, his, his, his wristbands, the basketballs oh. at the free throw line, and, and everybody did. And I think for me, as I got older, it wasn't strange. It was out of necessity. I had to get in some kind of steam room and have all those hot pads wrapped around me just to get loose to play. I like that story. I don't like a Baby Jordan's story, though. Harold Miner, <laughs> that, that doesn't work for me. I, I don't understand that. Bikes, count it. Bikes has got his first basket of the night. Here's Paul. He had 22 points in the win against the Trailblazers in Portland. Here's Ariza, and a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. Andre Drummond picks one up. The Rockets shooting their sixth and seventh free throw attempts tonight. Two shots. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. And he knocks down the first one. And they struggled a bit at the line in the first quarter, but they have been terrific in the second, up to almost 85% overall. Catching up on the changes for Houston. Clint Capella comes in for Anderson, and it's Harden in for Chris Paul. 
Then for the Pistons, Griffin comes in for Anthony Tolliver. And it's Reggie Bullock in for Langston Galloway. Ariza hits them both. And a great job from the line this quarter. They've gotten their percentage way up there. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. And listen, sometimes even the best of us are going to miss the easiest of opportunities. Well, the pace, the big plays they're making, this is a statement run right here. Hard to remember the last time they've missed. These guys are having fun right now. Here's Bikes. Taking a look at his stance, he's averaging around 7.5 points a game. And Gordon over to help. Gennard, the pass to Drummond. Bullock, good. Bullock's got seven points. That was a great pass once the double team came over. He hit the wide open man perfectly. And he uses the glass on the layup. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. For Detroit, they've gone only two of seven from the field since the second quarter got underway. Stolen by Harden. All alone. And Harden with the stuff. And I just love how aggressive Harden is inside. When he's deep like that, he is ready to finish with authority. Here's Bikes, guarded by Harden. That's his fourth basket of the game, and he's only taken four shots off to a good start. You know, he had a hot start to this game. He's only gotten hotter. We'll see if the defense makes an adjustment. Here's Bikes. Drummond is doubled. In the corner, it's Griffin. Lobbed up there for Drummond. And no good. And the Rockets take it the other way. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that one. Yeah, they are really starting to push it now. And turnovers have been the issue for them. You can see the coaches have gotten into them a little bit about this. They've got to do a better job of taking care of the ball. Bullock, good. Not letting his team down. He's been very strong. He just needs a little help from his teammates. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Capella. Mm, poor timing on that play causes the turnover. Here's Bikes. Down low, here's Kennard. And tight, he gets the jumper to fall. I mean, the number of points they've scored in the paint already here is eye-opening. Here's Capella, an easy two points on the layup. Capella's got 15. And they're beginning to just flat-out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Pass to Bikes. And Capella over to help. Got a piece of it to the wing right side. Six to shoot. It's stolen by Capella. The finish and the dunk by Capella. Well, there you go. One team operating on all cylinders at both ends. Steals, fast break buckets, and the other team in scramble mode. Here's Bikes. Passes it to Kennard. Inside. And it's Eric Gordon with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. Smith checked in for the Pistons. On defense, the Rockets. Stolen by Gordon. And pushing it up is Houston Rockets again in transition. Score it. His third straight basket in three tries. And a late reaction by the defense makes that one a no contest. You know, he got out before people could turn their heads, and he's already gone with no hesitation. You look at that lead pass there. He just has such a great feel for the game. Here's Capella. That shot off. Good D by Drummond. And stolen by Gordon. One-on-one -on -one here. Here's Capella. And the dunk by Capella. And on the defensive side, just a failure to match up. Well, the one thing you want to take away is anything at the rim. Just too easy. For Detroit, they've gone 5 of 11 from the field since the beginning of the second quarter. It's tipped. 
kicks to Bullock. Harden against Smith. Feeds it to Bullock. Just five on the clock. And Capella over to help. New 24-second clock for Detroit. And that one's good. Drummond. Polishing up his mid-range game. Andre becoming a more complete offensive threat. Capella dishes to Hart. Good for the fifth time in five shots. He remains perfect. Nicely done. They continue to attack inside, and that's 10 points in a row in the paint. Now the pass to Kennard. There's the feed to Drummond. Here's Griffin. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Ish Smith. That is his first foul of the game. James Ennis, he'll check in for Kennard. And for Houston, their shooting has been sensational. 75% for the game. Harden, that's good. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. Smith against Harden. Smith kicks to Drummond. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. That's on Clint Capella. And watching Andre Drummond play, he's really just an old-school type center. I mean, eats up space in the middle and finishes plays in close. Not a skilled guy who can pull a defender away from the basket. Two shots. First one falls for him. And with Drummond, he does play like uh, towering centers of decades past. Yeah, I mean, he isn't great at moving the ball around or hitting shots from range, but his size and athleticism are elite and one of the best rebounders in our game. He doesn't get the second one. Well, you always hear about a player working extra hard in the offseason when they're approaching free agency or... How much truth is there to the idea, uh, Steve, of a player doing more in a contract year, trying trying harder? Well, you're here. I mean, you're here teammates. You're here guys, um, competitors. You're here us, analysts saying, you know when there's a contract year for a lot of guys. And you look at a guy putting in a little bit more effort. I think the guy that you respect the most is when they play the same way all the time, whether it's a contract year or the first year. But a lot of guys do ramp it up and make more shots when is the contract year? Yeah, but, but that's human nature, don't you think? I mean, if you know there's a prize at the end, the harder you work, if there's a big test at the end of the week, you, you study harder. I mean, I, just, I would just think that's just human nature. It is, and I think, for, for instance, the teams and general managers, you have to do your homework to understand the type of player that you're paying for a long time. Catching up on the changes for Houston. And Baamute's checked in for P.J. Tucker, and it's Green in for Gordon. Nelson's checked in for Detroit. The Pistons have gone 6 of 14 shooting here in the second. Shot by Ennis. Nobody around. Again, the miss by the Pistons. On offense, here are the Rockets. Capella goes in. The shot, no good. Good D by Drummond. Nelson, the pass to Griffin. He dishes it to Smith. It's stolen by Capella. And here we go. Rockets running again. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. You remember back in 2012, James Harden was the sixth man of the year. Now he's every bit the franchise player. When sometimes it gets started with a hard foul from the other team or a whistle that you felt should have gone the other way, anger can happen in the NBA. We see it. <laughs> Emotions are high. It's a passionate game. Smitty, what was the angriest you ever got during a game? I, I, I know you competed because you were one of the Two best shots. competitors I ever saw, but did it ever cross that line of, of becoming a little bit more gritty, a little bit more angrier? It, it did, Kevin. I think uh, one instance for sure. Game 7, Western Conference. Rolled the basketball hard as I could and was fouled by Shaq. They didn't call it. Being flattened, laid out, and the guys going up and down, we eventually lost that game. That was one I still haven't got over it. And when I see Shaq today, I might not do it, but I want to knock him upside his head because <laughs> yeah, no, he don't knew do it was now. a foul, and I knew it was a foul, but it wasn't called. 
<laughs> he is one big man. He looks like he could play right now, as do you, which I think is great about about uh, about ex-athletes and keeping in shape and staying that way. But Shaq certainly looks like he could play right now. And I would be a five right now trying to guard him. That'll be that'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Little mismatch. <laughs> You can see there, the defender allows himself to get picked. You know, it's all about effort. Sometimes you're going to get hit on hard screens. You just have to fight through them. And he wanted everybody in the building to feel that ferocity. And we did. Yeah. And we, we felt it. Even over here, we felt it. And Ba'amute with the steal. And the dunk by Ba'amute. And that's the classic one-two punch right there. I mean, nice steal. And then how about the elevation, Kevin, on the finish? And, Greg, nothing spurs some quick offense like a great play defensively. When your defense translates into offense, it's a beautiful thing. And Detroit has possession following the score by Houston. There's Moreland. He's guarded by Mbamute. And out of bounds as the Rockets gain possession. I mean, clearly not on the same page right there. You hate to give away possessions. And the Rockets making a change here. Paul's checked in. And then for Detroit, Anthony Tolliver. He's checked in for Griffin. And Langston Galloway subbed in for James Ennis. Now here's Anderson. He's got eight. Misses from close range. Yeah, the aggressive D inside leads to a missed opportunity there. You know, he had terrific position. Does a good job of affecting the shot without fouling. Here's Johnson. He has five. Johnson draws the double. Tolliver for three. It's rebounded by Paul. And for Houston, their shooting has been just uncontainable. 72%. And Baamute can't get it to go. Oh, I don't believe that. He's better than that. Come on. Now, here is Nelson. Quiet so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. He kicks to Moreland. It's stolen by Ariza. To the middle. Here is Mbaamute. Good, and it's Green picking up the assist. Mbaamute has got six points in the quarter. Yeah, that's the third bucket in a row from the pay. This defense needs to clog those lanes in the middle. They set the screen. Here's Tolliver. Terrific design on the pick play, and he lays it in. Tolliver's got his second basket of the game. You've got to give a ton of credit to the screener. That play easily opened up the easy layup for his teammate. A little undersized at the four, but he can get off the ground. Detroit's gone two for five from three-point land since the end of the first. Here's Galloway, guarded by Green. Galloway kicks to Tolliver. Good on the three-point shot. Tolliver's got seven points. And really, the defense didn't do a lot to fight around that screen on that possession. And that one's good. Green. No hesitation from Chris Paul getting the basketball to the open man quickly. Now, here is Nelson. He averages about uh, five points a game. And Green gets it to go. Six points for him. And the steal then right into the fast break. Great awareness. Perfect, perfect read. Takes a chance. Certainly pays off. Here's Nelson. He's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Here's Anderson. Nice work on the board. He's paying off with the basket. Guys, he's having a ball out there. I mean, we knew going in that he'd have an advantage on the glass, but I didn't think he could be this dominant. What a difference. And he's not going to back off. Even with that big lead, he's going to get more motivated to keep stretching out their lead. And so it's the Houston Rockets with a huge lead at the break. Safe to say there's no catching them today. From the field, they have been outstanding. Amazing shooting. That's what has them headed to a blowout. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Hey, Jameer, what needs to change in the second half? I mean, we got to obviously keep them off the offensive boards. Uh, we're making a lot of mistakes, a lot of, a lot of careless mistakes, things that we could change. But it's up to us to change them. Coach can't draw up something on that board that's going to change that. We have to come with effort, but we have to play smart. We can't go out there and, and lose our mind when we're trying to play hard. Definitely need to pick it up. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks so much, Dave, for the great interview. Don't go away, folks. We'll be back for the second half of basketball right after this.
the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, everybody. Ernie Johnson joined by Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome to the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. Been working out. Houston holding the upper hand after the first two quarters. They are completely in control of the game, leading by a massive amount. Kenny, some perspective, please. Well, they were completely in rhythm shooting the basketball. Just watching the flow of their offense, everything clicked into place. Fantastic shot selection. They took advantage of everything the defense gave them. And Shaq, what are your thoughts on Detroit? Well, it's no wonder they're getting blown out. No energy, no fight in the rebound battle. Ernie, you got to pick it up. You got to pick it up starting now, or it's going to be impossible to come back. Like the Pythagorean theorem, times 50, times 100, times 50, times 10. Impossible to figure out, Ernie. And that will conclude our halftime presentation. We take you back to Kevin Harlan for the second half. Welcome back, everybody. Third quarter just about to get going here in what has been so far a runaway game. Clint Capella really making a difference here. And he's been a monster in this game, throwing down some huge dunks. And I wasn't sure the rim would even survive in that first half. And I can't wait to see what he has in store during this second half. Some of those jams were downright absurd. And as we welcome you back, we begin our second half. So far, not a tightly contested game, guys, but you know, anything can happen. Filling out the wings, it's Harden and Ariza. E.J. Tucker is out there with Clint Capella, and it's Paul in at the one spot. That's the five for Houston right now. And, uh, oh, here, there's a whistle. He was going up for a layup, and while it looked like there was some contact, I wasn't sure they were going to call it a foul shot or not, but sure enough, they have. So he'll head to the free throw line. On the free throw, no good. Well, Smitty, we're in an air where there are just a handful of absolutely unreal scores in the league, but if you had to pick one who makes it look the easiest or the best, uh, who's your pick? You're right. You have so many guys, um, Harden, Durant, Westbrook. But the one guy I think it makes it look the easiest, I uh, would probably have to say Clay Thompson because he doesn't need anything but mm. to catch and shoot. And he's getting not just 20s and 30s, but he can go off for 60, 50s and 60s. That's the guy that makes it look the easiest. <laughs> and it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the he's shot. Done, the Pistons shooting their fifth and sixth free throws of the game. shots and he makes the first And so he makes both from the line. You know, Stephen, I think of Stan Van Gundy, I think of Versatile, because we all know he's the head coach of the Detroit Pistons, but he's in charge of all their personnel moves, too. This guy's got a lot on his plate. Yeah, he does. I mean, when you start to look at it, he's wearing two hats. Uh, and one thing, he's doing a good job trying to run this organization from a management standpoint and also from a culture standpoint. So far, so good for Stan. Explosive leaping ability allows him to play the five, even though he's a little undersized. And the Pistons with possession here. Bobbed up there for Drummond. And it goes out of bounds. That one is off Smith. And now a chance to take a look at the shot chart for Detroit. 
And as this chart shows, things just aren't falling for him like they usually do. He isn't ice cold, but nothing is falling his way, and he's become an inefficient source of points for his team. Rockets have gone four of seven to get things started here in the second half. Capella with the bucket. Up by a bunch. He's still pushing the action, trying to impose his will. With this big of a deficit in the score, you think the losing team would be playing harder. Nope, the opposite. And the Rockets getting another bucket right there. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agendas. Poked away. Griffin with it. He's picked up by Ariza. And here we go. Rockets running again. And the dunk by Capella. Man, they, they just keep coming at you. Can they sustain this level of energy for the rest of the night? Well, as they fuel this lead, looks like the guys are feeding off the success. That keeps them going. And Clint Capella is going to pick up a foul. That's his fourth foul of the contest. This could be a problem. That's his fourth foul with plenty of basketball left to play. Two minutes into the second half of play now. Smith drawn the double team. Griffin kicks to Bullock. Pistons passing it around. Looking to end the run. Will not go. This is off the front iron. Capella goes in. Ice D from Griffin. And for the Pistons, they're shooting a meager 37% for the game. Ennis misses. And the rebounding has been key to their success here tonight. I say it's the number one reason why they are ahead in this game right now. Harden's shot is off. Some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, right now you just need a bucket to get some momentum. And Drummond kicks to Griffin. They get a hand on it. Stolen by Harden. Lays it in off the breakaway. Harden's got 18 points. Uh, defense, for me, just hasn't made the commitment to sprint back in transition, and that's why you see such a huge differential in fast break points. Now here's Griffin. Eight points for him. To the paint. And it's Ennis that time on the assist by Griffin. Ah, Griffin had a chance to score that one, but he saw a teammate wide open, so he kicked it to him for an... Ooh. Ooh. And how about just floating to the rim on that slam? Boy, when he gets up, I mean, he gets up. The Pistons have gone one of three since starting the second half. We've gone about three and a half minutes into the third now. Back to Smith over Paul. And Detroit again with the bucket. The defense slow to react that time. Smith makes them pay using his quickness. Shoots. And Houston again with the bucket. That makes it 10 of their last 12 coming from inside the paint. The Pistons have gone 2 of 4 here to start the second half. There's the dish to Bullock. He feeds it to Griffin. Bangs home the trifecta. He's got 11. Yes, it goes. He has expanded his range. Blake Griffin now is one of those players you at least got to come out and contest him when he's at the line. It's stolen by Capella. Harden gets the bucket. Harden's got 20. It's not rocket science. At some point, the defense has to show more urgency getting back in transition. And Smith gets double teamed. Stolen by Harden. For the finish. And the jam by Harden. Yeah, they're having a tough time containing Harden here tonight. No surprise there. Now, here is Smith. And there's a whistle that's going to go on James Harden. That is his first foul of the game. Gordon's checked in for Trevor Ariza. Then for the Pistons, Kennard, he's checked in for James Ennis. And it's Dwight Bikes in for Ish Smith. And Harden comes to help. And there's a whistle that's going to go on James Harden. That'll be his second foul of the game. And the next one puts him in the bonus. Up. 
Pikes in the corner. Drummond, a screen. Inside, Canard. And Capella sends it back. Here's Bullock, guarded by Harden. Here's Griffin. Lays it up off the glass. Griffin's got five points in the quarter. I love the effort by Blake Griffin down on the block, making it look very easy. Paul's shot is off. The Pistons have gone four of seven to get things started here in the second half. Bullock dishes to Bikes. To the right side. And another three for Detroit. And the D has gotten a little bit laxed here, defending the triple. And it's Paul penetrating, and he drops it in from the low post. Paul's got 14 points. You have to respect Chris Paul's ability to bury shots inside. He is so tricky with how he finds angles and ways to get shots over the defense. Paul with the steal. Makes it off the glass. 16 points for him. Ripping and running. They have a big advantage now in those transition opportunities. Drummond passes to Bikes. Here's Kennard, defended by Paul. Drummond, the screen to the paint, stolen by Tucker. Paul with the ball. He's got 16. Out of bounds. Detroit takes possession. Anderson, he's checked in for Time Houston. Mbaamute comes in Start for it. P.J. Tucker. And Detroit with a change here, too. Tolliver's checked in. And now the first timeout called here for the Rockets. And <laughs> you can see his wheels are turning. We'll see what he draws up here. It's been an ongoing battle of adjustments, trying to identify your strongest matchup each time down the floor. Detroit making a switch here. Johnson's checked in. And a chance here to check out some stats on Blake Griffin. A wonderful string of games he's put together here lately. Averaging about 23 points per, six assists, and six rebounds. And he has been passing the ball like a virtuoso. That's what really stands out about these recent performances. You know, mentally, he's a pass-first type of player. It gets everyone involved and engaged, and that really sparks this offense. For Detroit, they've gotten five of eight shots to fall for them in the third quarter. A nice 62% from the field. Johnson the screen. Tolliver for three. And he's good on the three ball. Tolliver's got ten. Boy, they've been terrific from beyond here in the second. Harden gets the bucket. And you got to enjoy watching Harden down low, uh, doing whatever he wants in the paint. And Eric Gordon has long been noted as a terrific shooter, but I felt like he was able to display just how great he can be last season. Had that green light whenever he was on the floor and really near the top of the league in terms of threes attempted and made. And the Rockets making a change here. Green's checked in. Then for the Pistons, Moreland's checked in. And Langston Galloway subbed in for Kennard. The defense a step slow, and you can see the result. Paul kicks to Green, out and out of bounds. The Pistons will take it. And for Gordon, he's been a great catch-and-shoot player in the past, Greg. The difference last season was the improvement in his pull-up threes. And there is a world of difference between shooting a three off the pass as opposed to off the dribble. Uh, the pull-up threes are what make players like Steph Curry so hard to guard. And when Gordon added that to his game, I think it helped his overall ability to score the basketball. Launches it. Good, and Paul gets the assist. Paul's got assist number 11 for him here tonight. It's so many of Gordon's shots come from three-point range because he drains so many of them. When, when you've had his kind of success from beyond the arc, you're always going to have the green light. Johnson double-teamed. Oh. 
And Stanley Johnson, the youngster out of Arizona, grew up in Los Angeles where he was the high school player of the year. You know, Steve, he hasn't had the easiest time adjusting to the NBA, but he certainly has room to improve, and right now the offense just isn't there for him. Take a you break. know, the question Take is, people are saying, is Two time shots. ticking away for Stanley to prove that he's a rotation player? He's kind of predictable on offense. People pushes him to go right because he only goes right. Just hasn't developed the way the team was hoping for. The first free throw is good. Nelson's checked in for Detroit. So Johnson hits two of them. This is as good as it gets from the charity stripe here in the second. And it's Green with the jam. Dropping dimes all night. He, he's been completely locked in. Unselfish basketball. That'll make you very popular amongst your teammates. Johnson the screen. Nelson kicks to Johnson. In the corner, it's Galloway. Lock at six. A floater, and he lays it up and in. Galloway has got his second bucket. And it's all about the release when you shoot the floater. Here's Anderson. Another shot, and the layup is good. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. Tolliver, good, and an ice assist from Nelson. Nelson's got four assists now tonight. A nice job of converting, but what really makes this play? The league pass. Oh, how about the floater there? Nice drop. Detroit's gotten 12 of their points from long range in the third quarter, going four of five shooting. And there's a whistle that goes on Luke and Baamute. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus, and we'll go to the line to shoot two. The Pistons have made five of eight of their free throw attempts. Shooting two. The first one falls. Both free throws good for Nelson. And for Houston, their shooting has been just uncontainable, 72%. And Green with the basket on the assist by Anderson. Anderson's got three assists in the game. And, well, Detroit shooting at 44%, pretty reasonable. And Gerald Green picks up the foul. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. The Pistons have made seven free throws and missed three in this game. Shooting two. Free throw drops for Nelson. That one falls, so he hits both of them. Anderson outside. From deep three-point range. Rebounded by the Pistons. Here's Johnson. And then Johnson with the dunk. Yeah, just solid work on the back end of that play. Yep, you're right. Finished hard with two hands on that stuff. And here's Anderson from the arc. Score the basket. It's number six for him this game. Six for nine. 67% shooting. How about the quickness of that release from Anderson on that triple? What, what a quick trigger. And to have a big man with his kind of accuracy from deep, it's a nice weapon to have. Houston's gone two or three when they ventured outside the arc in the third quarter. Here's Paul. He makes his ninth shot of the game. He has only missed four. 132 left to play in the third. Here's Galloway. He averages a bit over six points a game. Moreland fouled in the act of shooting. A three-point play chance coming up. And they found the touch from the field here in the second half. It was a struggle in that first. First trip to the free throw line for him tonight. Not the best statistic for him in terms of his performance at the line. Very low numbers.
One shot. And the free throw, no good. And Mbappé Mute, the former UCLA Bruin, has made a name for himself with his play on the defensive end. He can match up well, Steve, with a number of positions and always does a good job. He does. Luke Balamute doesn't get a ton of points, but he's always on the floor for his defense. Will always have a place in a rotation with how he plays D. Johnson, wide open, he fires. Misses the three. Houston's gone three of four from long range in the game. Paul goes in over Nelson, and again, Chris Paul. Paul's got 12 points here in the second half. Uh, assists like that have typified their effort today. Terrific ball movement. Nelson against Paul. Knocks it loose. Out to the wing. Back to Galloway. Nelson kicks to Johnson. Four on the clock. And here we go. Paul heading to the hoop. And finished off by Paul. I mean, that's terrific finish in transition. Chris Paul dynamic when they're pushing the tempo. Detroit's gone four or six from three-point land since the start of the second half. Nelson against Paul. Now, here is Nelson. Tight defense on him. And taken away by Paul. Here is Mbamute. And there's the foul on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. And there's the foul against Detroit. This is his first trip to the line tonight. Free throw, and Baamute, good. And Baamute drops them both. Smith off on that one and so it's the Houston Rockets holding an unbelievable lead as the quarter wraps up they've got a big advantage in the turnover stats because of their intense defense back right after this And now let's take a listen to Stan Van Gundy on a recent huddle. We're not going to get this all back at once. Just play our game. Pick up our defensive intensity, but we don't need to rush down here. Just play our game. Stan Van Gundy asking his players to take it possession by possession, trying to whittle down this lead. Getting out of character will not help at all. They need to do what they do best, and then you just live with the results. And we're rolling here again with the fourth quarter. Might not come down to the wire, but you never know. And on the four for Detroit here in the fourth. They've got Ellenson. Ish Smith is out there with Ennis. And it's Galloway in at the two spot. Smith outside. And there's the foul. It's going to go on Tarek Black. That's his first foul. Well, Steve, it's something that everyone has a different opinion on. How do you feel about the current amount of years a player has to play in college before they enter the NBA draft? Well, Kevin, I look at it this way is I like the notion that people have been throwing around uh, that you're able to come out of high school and go to the NBA. But if you choose to go to college, you must play two years. So I'm leaning toward and researching and looking at that. I think I'm on board with that because there are some guys should have the opportunity straight out of high school. And there are some guys I think need college. So I think 
if they can balance that out. And that, I think that's the way I would be leaning. I like that perspective. And for the Pistons, they're shooting reasonably well, 45%. Here's Galloway from outside off the mark. Houston's gone three or four from long range in the game. Here's Green. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. That's good from Green. And both free throws good for Green. You know, Smitty, as the game grows internationally, we've seen a contrast drawn between the academies, for instance, in Europe and Australia and, and the youth basketball organizations in this country. Do you think we're doing it the right way? Uh, should there be change? More, uh, more policing of just how things are run at a very young level? I think more policing, Kevin. I think also coaches uh, being better equipped to be able to be around young kids. I think also how many games these kids are playing. I think obviously you want them to have games, but when they're playing five, six, seven games in a weekend, I just think that's too much. There's the pick. Out to the right wing. Off target from outside. Still no rhythm. This may be a time when you want to make the extra pass. Give someone else a chance. And the basket by Gordon. And here's Smith. Dishes it to Galloway. Back to Smith. Moreland passes to Galloway. Nice ball movement by Detroit. Smith against Gordon. Ball's knocked loose. Can they get it? Smith, no good. The defense fortunate there. He's a guy you hate to leave wide open. Johnson played in with a nice touch off the glass. Not a lot of resistance on the inside, and they're taking full advantage. The Pistons have gotten off to a rough start in the fourth quarter here, going 0 for 4 so far. Taking what the defense offers up, Smith with good vision there, finds the open man. Got a hand on it. Here's Galloway, guarded by Green. Galloway dishes to Smith. That's good, and so Galloway with the assist. Now that's where you like your shots to come from. Nene, right side. And slam dunk by Nene. Well, this is what every coach emphasizes. Keep your head up, be willing to make the extra pass. Detroit's gone ice cold from three-point land, 0-4 since the start of the final quarter. And that's out of bounds. Detroit will retain possession. James Harden, he's checked in for Houston. Kennard, he's checked in for the Pistons. Dwight Bikes comes in for Smith. And Harden comes to help. Now here's Ennis. He's guarded by Johnson. Pass to Bikes. There's the pick, and there's the call on Nene. That is his first foul of the game. Well, the NBA has taken great strides to ensure a competitive balance, Steve, over the past decades, but they have a long way to go to achieve complete parity. I don't know that it can, it can ever be done. How do you feel about the current competitive balance of the league right now? You know, I think it's good, but Kevin, you're totally right. You can't get complete parity. You're going to have injuries, and I think when you have injuries, it changes the whole dynamic of these teams. So, so far, so good for me. I think it's a lot of balance. Good teams are good for a while, and then it always shifts and changes. I think we're in good hands right now. A bit under three and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth. Hits. Count that one from Ennis. 
Yeah, and they are living and dying from beyond the arc since halftime. It's a different look than what we saw in the first half. Their interior has been inferior defensively. It has got to tighten up. They set the pick. Here's the three. Kennard shot is off. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the boards has been impressive. Got that bucket in in no time at all. Look at the intensity of Nene, one of the strongest guys in the game. Phenomenal at scoring the ball inside. Here's Bikes, guarded by Harden. And the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touched by Nene. Here's Bikes. And there's the defensive three-second call. And Smitty, I, I heard somewhere that both Larry Bird and Kevin Durant did a lot of wrist strengthening exercises when they were growing up. How important is wrist strength to basketball players and especially shooters like yourself? You know, when you're taught the game of shooting a basketball, Kevin, they say get your legs into it. But there's sometimes you are Mind in the situations legs. where Mind the only legs. thing you can do One is shot. use your arms and your wrists. And you see guys right now from a flat-out standstill position deep behind the three-point line, a la Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. They're just shooting it with all arms and wrists. So it's very important to strengthen your wrists and your arms. And did you do that? Did you do any of that wrist strengthening when you played, and did you adhere to that? I did not, Kevin. All I did was do some push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Pass to Moreland, out left to the wing. Kicks to Bikes. Six on the shot clock. There's a screen. Off the pick. Moreland with the bucket. Moreland's got four points now in the quarter. Now how about how he sets his man up there, runs him right into the screen, and then gets the basketball. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Now Ennis. Johnson over to help. To the inside, Moreland. It's good, the assist that time for Menace. Nice interior pass, and then the strong finish. Black in the post, and he drops in the layup off the glass. Defensively, you cause the miss, but then you have to corral it. You know, there is nothing more frustrating than that. Giving up points on a possession, you won. Ennis kicks to Ellenson. Back to Ennis. There's a good screen inside. Here's Ellenson. Uses the glass to finish the layup. Really strong rebounding on the interior, and he gets the easy putback. Got a piece of it. Here's Bikes. Passes to Ellenson. Feeds it to Ennis from outside the arc. Kept alive. Tries again, and the layup is up and in. Moreland's got 12 points in just the second half. So much sharper, so much more efficient with this shot this half. Just taking what the defense allows. And with the business of basketball booming, most players are afforded a pretty lavish lifestyle. There's no doubt, and not only the NBA, but in all sports, certainly a blessing. But, Smitty, are, are there downsides to all that notoriety, all that money, all that lavishness? Yeah, it is, Kevin. I think the downside is, one, you can't live that lifestyle uh, if it's lavish for the rest of your life. And I think, second, it takes away. You are a public figure right now. You have to understand that. And that's the downside. Being able to go out with your family, being able to go out to a restaurant, you got to understand, yes, there's going to be fans everywhere, and it takes away from that. So I think that's the two things for me is guys got to understand that lifestyle doesn't last. And I think also, personally, it takes away from what you can do out in public. And the shot is good from Johnson. Here's Bikes. The pass to Ennis. Three-pointer. And another three for Detroit. Now we can say it. He's a completely different shooter this half. Much more confidence, much more success. 
And we always talk about making your teammate better. That assist was right on target. Piston shooting at 48% from the floor. Looking good. Pass to Kennard. They double him with Green. Nice ball movement by Detroit. It's blocked. And that's out of bounds. Detroit will retain possession. For the Rockets, Brandon Wright's checked in for Tark Black. P.J. Tucker comes in for Nene. And Mbamute comes in for Johnson. Here's Bikes. Six to shoot. Right wing. Right with the double team. Let's go. And the shot no good. A bit short. Plus eight in the rebound differential. One more reason why they're in control. And the basket by Harden. Again and again, they're dissecting the defense and creating those high percentage looks from inside. Here's Bikes, guarded by Harden. And the officials signal the backcourt violation. Not very careful there. Yeah, they've gotten careless, Kevin. No doubt about it with their turnovers in the second half. An amazing finish with a hand right in his face. Harden's got 12 points in just the second half. And, well, Detroit shooting a well here in the fourth quarter at 50%. Here's the screen. Pass to Kennard. To the wing right side. Here's Ennis. Detroit no good that time either. Houston's gone three or four from long range in the game. Shots good from Mba Amute. Mba Amute has got 24 points. Just relentless. Uh, really impressed with how they've been able to maintain that focus. When you have a huge lead, it's easy to get sloppy on offense. They haven't fallen into that trap. Here's right. It's rebounded by Moreland. Moreland's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring effectively from the paint. And there's the call on Brandon Wright. That's his first foul. And the Rockets making a change here. Paul's checked in. And the Pistons making a change here as well. Nelson's checked in for Dwight Bikes. Right with the double team. Ennis kicks to Nelson. It's good. The assist that time from Ennis. And it's six points for Jameer Nelson. That was a great pass once the double team came over. He hit the wide open man perfectly. Shots good from Mba Amute. I tell you what, his accuracy has been the story of this game. And to do it in the fourth quarter, you're trying to extend the lead. He's making that happen. They double him with Green. The feed to Ennis. Nelson outside. From deep. Nelson with another miss. You don't want your best shooter heaving up that shot. No, not at all. Coach is not going to like that one. He's in fuego right now. When he gets like this, he's hard to stop. Piston shooting a respectable 47% from the field in this one. He dishes it to Ennis, lets the three fly, trains the three-pointer. Another triple, and that's been the story of this second half. Coming out of the break, they've relied on their perimeter offense to generate points. Right now, it's working. Yeah, just a simple one-hand flush. I think he got a few more inches on his vertical by going with the spike. Nelson with it, Chris Paul covering, and Ba Amuche with the steal. Nelson against Paul. He gets that one. Paul's got 16 points here in the second half. And as we head to the final buzzer here, a crushing blowout. Big time dominance. And, and this will go in the record books as a gouty win for the Rockets.
And this was one that never really was in doubt, I thought, an all-around dominant performance. And you kind of thought that maybe even going into the game. Yeah, th there was a sense of that. And, and man, they, they just pretty much blew them right out of the water. A clinic was put on display here today. And when you look at the season for these guys, they have amassed a lot of wins, 57. And adding in tonight, it'll make it 58. No doubt they came in very motivated to win this one and finish the season series at a game apiece. And you know, when you look at the huge impact he had, just a monster game for Chris Paul. You know, when we talk about floor general, this is really what we mean. He was making the right reads, directing guys around, delivering passes that were on time and on point. They double him with Green. Nelson from outside, and he's good on the three ball. Time and out, you can out. see where they're attacking here in the fourth, strictly from the perimeter. You know, plenty of teams, they try this strategy. Works when you're hot, but works against you when you're not. Timeout called the Rockets. And now we've got a moment for our Jordan player of the game, Chris Paul. And what an amazing ball game we've seen from him. It's been a one-man show worth the price of admission all by itself. There wasn't anything he couldn't do on that court tonight. Coming into this game, he'd been having a tough stretch. We all know that, but not anymore. He's back at his best, and I think it's safe to say that slump is over. Ryan Anderson, he's checked in for Mbaumute. Goes up off the inbound, and there's Green on the assist from Tucker. And how much longer are they going to keep that foot on the accelerator? Well, this is less about winning the game now and more about making a bold statement. Here's Kennard. Off target with his three. And that's the shot he wants. Just a little bit out of rhythm. It's a four-second differential between the shot clock and game clock. And Green gets it to go. And this is the kind of deficit it would take a miracle to overcome. I think this hometown crowd agrees with you. They are fired up about it. Ellenson with a screen for Ennis. Nelson outside. They get a hand on it. And it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Green. And out of bounds as the Rockets gain possession. That is just a careless turnover. You've got to be smarter in those exchanges. So we see the Rockets taking the win here. They poured it on a night. Dominant showing in front of a crowd that loved every minute of it. And, you know, this game could really be a defining one for what they can do when they are playing at their best. I mean, being here at home no doubt helps, and the execution was flawless. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin. Chris, big win tonight. What do you think was the biggest factor? I mean, I don't know. You know, it was just our defense. You know, obviously our offense fed off of it. Guys made open shots, but I think we really locked down defensively, and that's what we're trying to make sure is that 
We're a defensive team every night. Well, you were a defensive team tonight, Chris. Thanks for your time. Kevin? All right, David, thank you. And that'll wrap it up, folks. Now for Greg Anthony, Steve Smith, and David Aldridge. This is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA here on 2K Sports. And we'll see you next time.